What's the word, y'all? It is that time. The regular season is officially wrapped up. As of three minutes ago, my Chicago Bulls, the last team to win a game this season. For some reason, why? I don't understand. Why do we win tonight? I, I don't know. But it's officially time that we can start talking about the postseason. Oh, you notice how I didn't say playoffs, right? The postseason, because I'm going to die on this hill. The play-in is not the playoffs. If the Spurs lose this first game, hypothetically, I don't know. We're going to talk about it. But if they lose this first game, the 9-10 matchup, are we saying that the Spurs are back on a playoff streak? Probably not. So what I'm saying is the postseason, and I know we're talking semantics here, but I'm saying it's the postseason and not the playoffs. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. Today's slate of games were very interesting. The battle of the eighth seed was fun. Um, both of the games live up to the hype, but the rest of the games today were kind of mid because players are resting. Um... And teams had agendas. You know what I'm saying? The the Clippers really went full tank these last couple games of the season to avoid potentially maybe going against the Lakers, even though there's there's no way to avoid something without really knowing what's writing on the wall. You know what I'm saying? So they, they tank like we're crazy, lose the last couple games of the season to just kind of put off the potentially going against the Lakers. It's it's amazingly done. Tyron Lue was in post-game interviews talking about, we we tried our hardest. We we really wanted to win. And it's talking about players out. Zubox is out because he's got lower back spasms or something. He ain't look like he had back spasms last time he played a game of basketball. Y'all y'all know what y'all doing. We The world know what y'all are doing. And it better work or we going to clown you. <laughs> we going to clown you. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, if you're new. Let's talk about. Let's talk about the games for today because, well, it was very interesting. Like I said, the battle of the A seeds were amazing. Um, but the one game that, <laughs> that made no sense to me. So the Celtics, they rest their starters and players. Of course, they already had the set as the seven seed. There's no reason to play. Same thing with the Pacers and the Raptors. There was no reason really to play. DeMontis did, and he played well. But there was really nothing you were really playing for at that point. Um, the game that was so crazy, and I didn't, I don't know why this game mattered to me so much, was the Suns versus the Spurs. I mean, I guess technically the Suns were still playing to potentially beat the one seed, but the Jazz were going against, but the Jazz had a bye basically, you know what I'm saying? So um, the Suns' chances of actually winning that one seed were very, very low. So they decided we're going to rest four out of our five starters. The only starter out there is going to be Mikel Bridges. We're going to start Cameron Payne, Javon Carter, Mikel, Jalen Smith, the rookie, shout out to him, um, had a double-double today, and Dario Sarge. And then our bench is going to consist of our bench, right? They go against the Spurs, and the Spurs have already secured themselves as a 10 seed, right? So they should be doing what the Celtics were doing. Just rest, bro. You got a plan in a few days. Nope, Greg Popovich like, nah, we need these reps. So we're going to start our normal start at five, and we're going to lose <laughs> to the Suns bench and their extended bench in a, in a close game. We're going to lose fully healthy, um, and that can't be good for morale going into <laughs> going into this play-in situation, bro. I, this is crazy, um, and, and I'm specifically talking about the play-in today because I don't know who I would pick in some of these set series, bro. Bucks versus Heat again, a rematch. I'm, I'm glad these teams are going against each other. As of right now, I don't know who I'd pick in this series. The 4-5 matchup in both conferences, I don't know who I'd pick in that series. Even Denver versus Portland, there is no series here where I can confidently say this is my opinion as of right now. And we will do previews and stuff eventually. You know, the, the postseason or the playoffs are coming very soon. So expect it. May 22nd is the first official playoff day. We will do a recap or a preview um, and I will give predictions. I'm not really a prediction guy. I would rather just talk about the the games. Um, but, hey, I'll give predictions because that's what people like. So let's start off with a prediction here. Start off in the Western Conference. Let's start our way down and work our way up with the 10 versus the 9. See, today when we talk about the battle of the ACs, the Golden State Warriors went against the Memphis Grizzlies. And the Memphis Grizzlies look good for a, a hot minute. Uh, Dylan Brooks was bringing him back into the game. He was playing solid enough defense on Stephen Curry for a minute, and then he fouled out. And then I had to remember that Dylan Brooks likes to foul. I mean, he may not like to foul a lot, but he does foul a lot, and he fouls out with like seven minutes left to go in the game. And, well, they the Memphis Grizzlies have no offense. And what I would say is the Memphis Grizzlies really showed their age in this game. And I know that technically – Technically, the Warriors aren't super old, but the, the players that matter the most on the Warriors are, are veterans, and the players that matter the most on the Memphis Grizzlies are, are pretty young, you know what I'm saying? So that youth show, they lose this game, but if they're going against the Spurs, who are having, I, I just told you, they are having a very rough time here. I think if I were making a prediction on this game, I'm, I might go with the Memphis Grizzlies here. And you know what? I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Spurs did it because the Spurs have such quality players. They have a player in Jacopoto who, for a minute, I thought about putting him on an all-defensive team if there was like four of them. You know, he's that good of a defender. 
it just hurts like today's game really set my mind back on the San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> I have to say it set my mind back on the San Antonio Spurs significantly. Um, and, and yeah, Memphis, I do believe that they are a quality and a good team. Four games over uh, 500. And John ja Morant in this game today wasn't the John ja Morant that you would want him to be. Now, last year when we were in the play-in, John ja Morant sp absolutely spazzed. His team lost. His team lost, but he absolutely spazzed. You know, I was I was hoping that he spazzed today, not saying that I wanted them to win, but I was hoping that he started to spaz today because this game really mattered, and it was I was trying to figure out, is Ja Morant going to be one of those players throughout his career when it's the last game of yada yada, he going to take off? And I'm not saying that's off the table by any means, but today he did not play well, and next game it might be even harder because though the Golden State Warriors have one of the best defenses in the league, shout out to Draymond Green and and. Andrew Wiggins, I guess, which is shout out to Andrew Wiggins, right? Defensive player. Uh, Kevon Looney, they have one of the best defensive teams in the league. I don't really, I didn't really see them as a team that would be able to match up very well with John Morant and his quickness. But on the Spurs side of things, the Spurs have a few defenders that they can throw at John Morant and be like, yeah, you're on Alcatraz now. DeJounte Murray was an all defensive player a few years ago. Kelda Johnson can guard you. Lonnie Walker can guard you. So John Morant might struggle a little bit. But I do believe that the X factor for them in this game, this specific game, is Jaron Jackson Jr. And you saw part of that in the game against uh, the Warriors today. He had a couple shots. He was the only player that can hit a three, even though he shot two for seven. He was the only one that was confident enough to take those threes. He played some really good defense on Steph Curry here and there. He might be the X factor for them. I would pick them to win that game. And then the Spurs hit the lottery again to see what can potentially happen. The next game, let's go over to the Eastern Conference to talk about this 9-10 because this is interesting, though. I, I would... I very rarely root for teams that's not the Chicago Bulls. Actually, never root for teams that's not the Chicago Bulls. But I would like to see the Charlotte Hornets win the game against the Indiana Pacers. Pacers fans mad at me. Oh, Kenny, just like you, division rival. You picking against the division rival. It's not really just that. I get, I get kind of bored with watching the Pacers. If it ain't DeMontis Sabonis bullying somebody, I get kind of bored. O'Shea Brissette, Brissette <laughs> has been hooping bright spot but like the rest of the roster ain't really been on nothing the second half of the season and charlotte is at least fun so i would like to see charlotte win this game you know and, and charlotte very similar to what i said about the memphis grizzlies on the other side they showed their age for real for real today um and of course the washington Wizards have two of the best players in the league and then the the charlotte hornets have good players but none of them are elite players they can take over a game they can they can stop the bleeding when it, when they were starting to bleed they are a young team their top players are super young i don't think people really realize that and that might be the reason why i picked the the pacers to win it win this game because one thing you can say about the pacers they have experience on their roster man demonte sabone is just justin holiday has been on a thousand teams playoff moments um karis lavert tj mcconnell's a guy that's gonna get on the skin so i might pick them to officially win the game but i might be rooting for the charlotte hornets to win it you know what i'm saying the inexperience really showed today terry rozier takes me as a type clip this if it if it works out terry rozier takes me as a type that'll drop 40 in a playing game so if it happens you heard it here first. And if it doesn't, who cares? You know, don't clip it. <laughs> don't clip it. Um, the, let's go to the seven eights because these were things get super juicy. Steph Curry versus LeBron. Jason Tatum versus Beal and Russ, Russell Westbrook, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be rough. It's going to be rough here. I think if I'm, I'm making a prediction, I'm picking Lakers over the Warriors um, for obvious reasons. I still believe that the Lakers are one of the best teams in the league. And, and right now, these are two of the hottest teams in the league going into the play-in, which is dope. Steph Curry is unguardable. Um, but the, the Lakers had, before the injuries and before AD and, and LeBron James went down injury, they were the best defensive team in the league. And wasn't really that close. They were the best defensive team in the league. And they're starting to kick that back into gear. Now that these players are back, I don't know what the scheme is guarding Steph Curry because he's such an anomaly and he's so hard to guard. But I trust their ability to guard the other four. And the, the Warriors not having that much of an answer for two of the guys. Like I said, the Warriors have a great defensive team this year, surprisingly, if you're looking at the numbers. They have a surprisingly great defensive team this year. I don't know if you're stopping Anthony and LeBron in a one-game elimination. It's finding it very hard, you know, especially with Draymond is going to have to take an assignment on one of the two or maybe just play safety here and there. He can't guard both. Kevon Looney, solid, solid defender. But if it's Kevon Looney and Anthony Davis on isolation on the on the short wing on the block, I'm taking Anthony Davis 70 percent of the times and 70 percent of the times enough for you to win a game. So I'd pick them to win. But I do believe this is going to be the most watched game this season. 
just easily until we get to the finals, depending on who's in it. The most watched game this season, LeBron and Stephen Curry have been two generational talents. And they're going head to head. And I was it would be better if loser went home, I guess, um, to say that oh LeBron sent Steph home or Steph Curry sent LeBron home. Realistically speaking, I would pick both of these teams to beat the seven, whoever wins between the nine and the ten. So both of these teams will probably end up in the playoffs. I guess they're battling to who's going against um who's going against Phoenix first. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I would pick I would pick the Lakers. I think they're just too too complete in comparison to the Warriors. And I think that has a lot to say about Steph Curry and how elite he has been this season. Where like again, the team ain't amazing around him. But he's also Steph Curry. You know what I'm saying? He's also Steph Curry. Shout out to Jordan Poole for the great game today as well. And then we get to the seven, eight seed in the Eastern Conference. And this should be super interesting. I would love to have Jalen Brown here for this game because I would probably pick the Boston Celtics to win it because they've been so up and down. Who would have thought that they would have been a 500 team going into the playoffs? Here we are, though. I don't know. Right? I, I, I mean, I'm guessing. I'm thinking that both of these teams end up in the actual playoffs. But if we're talking about this one game elimination here, I would say. I would say the Washington Wizards may win this one. And the only reason I say that is just. Two is, greater than, two is greater than one, bro. The way Russell Westbrook, and I guess Bradley Beal was up and down today. We got to see what his real official status is with that hamstring. Because, again, he didn't look great for a good portion of today's game. We got to see what his, what his condition is like. I just trust them down the stretch more than I trust anybody on the Boston Celtics other than Jason Tatum. And that might be all it boils down to. Legit might be all it boils down to. If this game is close... I'm going to have to take the Washington Wizards. Now, the Wizards and the Boston Celtics are very similar as far as the depth is very lacking between the two teams, for sure. So that's why I'm taking the, the talent of the Washington Wizards. But I will say, it is just one basketball game. It's just it's one basketball game. All it takes is for Bradley Beal to not have a good game. All it takes is for Russell Westbrook not to have a good game. And that can be said about any other team here in this play-in, and I th that's again why I do believe that this play-in idea, idea is such a good thing for the league. One bad game can send you home. If Ja plays like trash, their season is over. If Sabonis plays like trash, their season is over. The All of this is just so exciting to me, and I just cannot wait until we're actually sitting down and watching these games. Starting off on Tuesday, the first game is on TNT at 5.30 Central Time, and that will be the Hornets versus the Pacers, and then quickly followed up at the TD. Oh, home court advantage. How much would that matter? Hmm, very interesting. Um, The Washington Wizards versus the Celtics, and then the next day, the next day is going to be, the I think, the banger on ESPN. Yeah. Let me know what you think about the plan, man. Do you disagree with everything I said in this video? If so, that's okay. I'm probably going to be wrong about everything. But you watch the whole thing, and that's all that matters. Leave a like. I'll be back soon. Peace.